welcome. Uh, there we go, get the announcement. Yeah, so um, thanks, Martha, for that introduction. Um, first thing, an apology. If you suddenly hear the sound of a crying toddler in the background, mm. there is a crying toddler in the background. I got the, the call from nursery yesterday afternoon that my, my daughter's ill. So my, my wife is looking after this morning and I will do it happy when I'll look after this afternoon. And so there is, you're not imagining things. Then it might be the sound of a, a crying baby in the background. Yeah, so things to consider when incorporating sustainability into professional practice. Um, and I'm just going to change the slide. Okay. So in this um, lightning talk, I'm going to hopefully briefly cover uh, the following things. Um, so firstly, sustainability at the University of Edinburgh, where I work. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my sustainability journey of how I've got to this point, whatever that point is. Um, I'll talk a little bit about sustainability in my own teaching context. Um, and then finally, there's a couple of considerations just to think about your own practice um, and four takeaway, take home pieces of advice that I think would be, that have helped. And it's all of this is from my own personal um, experience or own, own personal journey. Obviously, we're only going to be able to scratch the surface um, of these things. So, firstly, um, sustainability. Can I get rid of this thing here? Um, how do I get rid of the, the banner at the top? It's not disappearing for me. Can you see that? Uh, we can see which, which banner. No, we can't see a banner that's. Okay, fine. That's fine. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. On my screen, I've got extra things that I can see that you can then. Um, yeah, so a sustainability um, at the University of Edinburgh. Now, in 2019, September, Peter Matheson, who's the Principal and Vice-Chancellor Vice of the University of Edinburgh, he formally unveiled this Strategy 2030 for the whole university. And the idea of this was to describe it described the direction of the university for the next decade um, and beyond. Now, it, it, um, it emphasises sort of four key areas, people, um, teaching and learning, social and civic responsibility, and research. And it's actually the social and civic responsibility part that interested me um, the most. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap between these four sort of pillars of sustainability. Um, now, the whole strategy 2030 essentially uses the SDGs, the 17 SDGs, to sort of inform pretty much everything we do and will do at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so without, we don't need to go into detail of those 17 goals. Simon um, talked about them a bit earlier on. Um, now, the idea is that my wife's a secondary school teacher, so I have an idea of what secondary school students are generally leaving school with in terms of knowledge about the SDGs. Um, and I've, I was finding that we weren't I, I, we weren't really building on this in, as effectively as we as we could do. So there is an idea that we could build on this knowledge they leave school with, um, and then they would be able to develop this on their degree programs further, probably in hopefully in innovative ways, hopefully influencing future course developments as well. Um, I'd also put on here on the screen, pick up the fact that recently the University of Edinburgh came fourth in the world and first in the UK um, in terms of work on sustainability. Um, now, a key component in achieving this um, actually is um, for the last 10 years or so, we've had a department dedicated to social responsibility and sustainability at the University of Edinburgh, and they've been instrumental in in, in reporting and, and creating these these. Uh, these amazing initiatives and schemes. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so that's the University of Edinburgh, and I'll put a couple of slides, um, uh, a couple of resources on later, but that's just a, a little bit of background there. So my own personal journey, um, like I feel a little bit of a, a fraud in a way. I've just watched Alex and Michael's talk just before me, and they, they, they kind of described a project which is kind of what I aspire to be creating to create in the next year or two. I'm I'm talking more about how I've create how I've turned a personal interest in sustainability um, alongside my professional job as an EAP teacher, and I've tried to sort of uh, embed or shoehorn or in some cases crowbar my my personal interest into my professional um, work. And I've actually found that that gap between the two over the last even over the last few months has narrowed significantly. So now I can legitimately I mean. This is a case in point. This is, to my knowledge, the first time there's been an EAP and sustainability talk um, conference put on. Um, so I've always had a personal interest in sustainability. And over the last five or six years, I've been more and more involved in things happening around the university. Um, I've listed a few things on this slide. It's not a comprehensive list, but just a, a few things that I've been involved with in roughly a chronological order. 
So as I mentioned before, the Department of Social Responsibility and Sustainability, SRS, um, they, I was forced, first made aware of them because they have a little 30 minute um, um, e sustainable course that was for staff and for students that just introduced you a little bit into what the university was doing regarding sustainability. Through SRS, I then became aware of, um, more aware of Sustrans as, a, as an organization, but they have a, an active travel champion scheme. And essentially, this it's not just cycling, it's about sustainable um, active travel in general. And um, this, there was things like you're manning stalls or you're putting up posters about various schemes and initiatives happening. Um, through SR, uh, through um, the Active Travel Champion Scheme and Sustrans, um, I became more aware of things happening in and around Edinburgh in general. Sustrans was also really good for training courses. So they were they provided funding for things like if you want to be a cycle leader, I became a job leader, first aid courses. Um, so they have pots of money available for people who are interested in becoming walk leaders and things like that. So through and then following that, I then started a, um, a jogging group, a lunchtime running club jogging group for staff and for students. And actually, quite a few of my students came along. It was really nice to introduce some of them to to jogging for the first time. Um, I'm very fortunate that I work at the very bottom of the Royal Mile. And so I'm, anyone who knows Edinburgh, I've got Arthur's Seat and Holyrood Park, an extinct volcano within five minutes of where I work. So um, a really nice area to be to be running around in the lunch times. Um, still related to health and well-being, I also started up a, well, started up, a cop I organised coffee breaks on, on Friday mornings. Um, we'd just gone from an open plan office to suddenly being put into little offices, so we never really saw our colleagues. So every Friday morning, I, was, I made a pot of coffee and brought in some biscuits. And it was me and a colleague, me and two colleagues. And then by the end of that academic year, there were 15, 20, 25 of us on a Friday morning um, chatting, talking. And it was something that was lacking in terms of our own sort of academic community just within our immediate um, colleagues. So this, that was a, a nice thing that was, again, relatively easy to, to set up. Obviously, many of those things were paused and um, were put on pause during the, the COVID pandemic, but they are being revived. So that the, the running group, as of a couple of months ago, that started up and the coffee mornings are going again. Um, so going back in time a little bit, 2018, 2019, through SRS, I completed another course they have called Be Sustainable in Advance. And now this was, a re was really well organized and it was a really nice way to network with other like-minded people around the university. Um, as part of that little, as part of that course, there was a personal project. So you had to focus on something that you were going to do, whether that's been cutting out plastic as much as possible, um, I don't know, um, using shampoo bars instead of bottles of shampoo, whatever your little project was. And my one was related to the fact that we just found that, um, I just found that I was throwing away so many whiteboard pens, for example, uh, as, a, as a teacher. Um, and finding ways of recycling whiteboard pens, which became a project to recycling stationery in general. Um, and then, so and that project through a company called Terracycle um, became part of our bid to, um, to get our gold award for sustainability awards, um, which, was, which we did. Um, so again, I turned a, a little idea into something a bit bigger. Um, and with the help of people in facilities and estates, um, we got that off the ground and that was really rewarding at the end. Um, that also introduced me to, I put it on here as well, Learning for Sustainability in Scotland, LFSS. Um, now, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an organisation, free membership, and I do find their newsletters are really, really important and really useful. Now, certainly if you're sc Scotland based, um, there's, there's lots of important events here and about other initiatives happening um, in and around Scotland at different levels, like primary, secondary and tertiary education. I think even if you're not able to attend them, it gives you a snapshot of what is happening um, related to sustainability and education um, around Scotland, certainly. And it's also been an, another way of, of meeting like-minded people. Um, I'm still I'm still involved with these various schemes, and I've started setting up other ones. Um, for example, I've mentioned on the screen here the Friday Coffee at the University of Edinburgh. We have a um, um, blog blog post repository called Teaching Matters, which is University of Edinburgh staff and students. Um, so I've written a couple of articles for, for that blog. And there's other very, they had a theme of sustainability um, during the pandemic, I think it was April 2020. The, the Times Higher Education Campus, that's an amazing resource for, um, for um, 
blog, uh, blog posts and ideas in general, but they have a specific SDGs focus. So you can search by SDGs and there's some really interesting ideas. And that's very practical ways that people can get involved with um, sustainability in their, in, their, in their professional practice. I mentioned here guerrilla gardening. This is a, a something from this year. I just found that on campus there was no colour. So I just, I just, um, on a rainy January morning, I, I, I managed to get hold of a few leftover tulip bulbs, daffodil bulbs, crocus bulbs, and I just planted them in these empty planters that were around campus. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, we'll see a bit of spring colour. A couple of colleagues came along and helped as well, and so did my daughter. Um, so hopefully this is an example of something where it's a grassroots from the sort of the bottom up. And the idea being, with the blessing of the head of the states, he said that let's do something from the bottom up, and then hopefully management will see it and go, oh, that looks great. And then you get a bit of buy-in from, from people in, in the position of decision making. And that's one of the points I'll come to you later on as well. Um, there's also a lunchtime walks idea that um, I actually finished the blurb for yesterday. And this is just a, a series of eight lunchtime walks, um, getting people away from their screens. Um, and appreciate it. getting outdoors, again, going for health and well-being. There's a lot surrounding um, social prescribing and green prescribing and, and, and green health and um, things like that at the moment. And the, the benefits of, the benefits to, to your own physical and, and mental health of, of, of being outside. Um, so these are some other ideas that will hopefully get off the ground as well. OK, now I'm going to go through a couple of things that are specific to my own my, my teaching context. So. As I mentioned before, I um, teach EAP as part of English language education, which is part of the Centre for Open Learning at the University of Edinburgh. The vast majority of my students speak English as a second language, but not exclusively. I also have home students, native speakers, mostly postgraduate, some undergraduate, some PhD, so a bit of a mixture. Um, at, the, at the start of the pandemic, so in, in when face-to-face -face teaching was suspended in March 2020, our um, our face-to-face -face academic and general English course, so age it was called, that had to go on, had to be pivoted um, very, very, at a very short notice online. Now we use a book called Develop EAP, a Sustainable Academic English Language, uh, English Skills course, um, which if any of you went to the talk pre prior to this in strand one, um, so that was Adel Bolster and Peter Lovray, they, um, they wrote this book and, they, and it was an, a, an invaluable resource, certainly during the pandemic, um, a freely available um, ebook. And it uses the um, SDGs to, um, to, to practice um, academic language skills. And uh, they also, through that, learn more about what we, the students learn more about what the university is doing. If you haven't looked at those resources before, then have, 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 a, have a look. Um, just in general, most written assessments for our in-house EAP courses over the last five years or so, instead of setting sort of generic writing tasks, We've, we've chosen themes such as population growth, impact of meat consumption on climate change, tapping the use of single-use disposable cups, plastic pollution. And this has been a nice way for students to consider recent and relevant issues and problems. They've selected their source materials. They've described and evaluated potential solutions, all of which use and develop these skills of critical thinking. Um, and basically just using sustainability as a, as, as a lens to, to, to teach these academic skills, um, as opposed to teaching sustainability itself. Um, I've also mentioned here something called seminar discussion skills. This is a short course we run to essentially give students a bit more confidence in, in their speaking ability. Um, and one of the sessions, um, I managed to again shoehorn or crowbar the SDGs into it, that the course organizer said, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and they, they select one of the 17 SDGs, they do a little bit of research on it, and then they essentially have a, they, they, they organize a mini, mini seminar based around this, the SDG of their choice. Um, I've mentioned the very last one there, the a practice listening test. As part of our pre-sessional, summer pre-sessional course, one of the practice listening tests is specifically about sustainability at the University of Edinburgh. So again, it's a way, it's, it's a way that I've managed to sneak it in kind of under the radar um, and I've probably noticed that a lot of my stuff sort of snuck in or shoehorned in in some way. And that's just through attrition, really, that you find that actually the students are exposed to a lot of stuff about sustainability. That's pretty much the end of my talk. But I'm just, it's a lot of information in a short amount of time. And I do speak very quickly. I'm aware of that. But I'm just going to leave you with um, two things to consider, which go back to what Simon was talking about in his keynote talk. 
um, and then I'll leave you with four takeaway points. So two questions to consider if you haven't considered these already. Think about ways that you already refer to issues addressed by the SDGs in your teaching, whether that's directly or indirectly. I mean, Simon, was, Simon mentioned that some of the resistance from colleagues to, um, to teaching about the SDGs or including in, the, in their content is that sort of, well, no, it's, it's intruding upon this important content. But actually, you probably find, and your colleagues probably find, that you already address the topics in nature, but not necessarily in name, saying SDG 4, SDG 9. And then maybe some of you actually do now refer to the SDG directly. And if so, which ones? If not, are there ways in which you could? Which ones would you choose and why? And what challenges might you face? These are things that came up in Simon's talk and in the, in the, in the questions and answers that followed. Just a couple of things to think about. And if there's time at the end, we'll, I'll, I'll, I want to get some of your thoughts. And that leaves me just with the four takeaway points, the take home points here. Again, going back to what Simon said, um, you cannot realistically become an expert in every um, SDG and nobody would expect you to either. Um, therefore, I found in, in my experience, I thought about what interested me on a personal level and what interested me on a more sort of professional level. And actually any, any that overlapped, that's a good place to start. If you really want to try to embed it into your professional teaching practice, that's a good way to focus your attention. You can have more in, impact talking to colleagues and students and managers about something that you, feel, that you feel personally invested in. In point two there, find out if your place of work has a dedicated sustainability department or even a, a, an individual. I am fortunate, like I said, that we've got the Department of Social Responsibility and Sustainability. Um, see if there are any courses you can complete, preferably for free, but see if funding is available if there isn't. Um, there are courses online, free online courses through Future Learn, edX, Coursera, um, also the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, so Donut, Donut Economics. There's loads of freely available courses that you can complete. There's also WWF has some great um, courses. Learning for Sustainability Scotland, um, and I've got the resources at the end there, and also Zero Waste Scotland as well have loads of interesting resources um, that you could look at. Um, also, lots of ideas on the THE campus, blog posts, and, and teaching matters as well. Number three I found actually, in hindsight, is probably one of the most important ones. Um, I'm assuming you're line managed by somebody. Um, speak to your line manager about your interests. I'm very fortunate to have a manager uh, at the moment who actively encourages me to take, to, to take part in things and to get involved. Um, if, they're not, if they're not actually that interested, then just do it anyway. I found with previous line managers, the first couple of years I just did stuff anyway and just if it, if it didn't conflict with my teaching allocation I just did it anyway I went to a, a sustainability AGM given by some charity and and, and reported that um, and what was it was really nice that it was eventually recognized um, and actually I was allocated 10 hours here 15 hours there to do stuff related to sustainability and last year just again through perseverance last year actually Goals related to sustainability um, featured on my annual review. Um, things like attend this conference, for example, um, but actually objectives and aims on my on my annual review. Um, I found, as I mentioned before, the gap between my personal interest in sustainability in, as an umbrella term and my professional teaching, the gap has narrowed and actually is overlapping in many ways. And the final point there, find things happening at your place of work related to um, sustainability. So talks, speakers, conferences, sign up for local newsletters, be enthusiastic, um, but try and keep your enthusiasm focused if possible. Um, I found that many of these extra things could be worked into my job commitments in some way. So I don't know, providing discussion prompts on an on a, on a environmental topic of the day kind of thing. The voluntary nature of some of what I do and makes it easy to step back if it did get in the way of my, of my teaching. And, and as we all know, these kinds of sort of passion projects, these, these pet projects, they do take a certain amount of goodwill to get them off the ground initially. And, um, but if you are passionate about it, it, it makes it easier. I mean, otherwise it gets boring pretty quickly. Um, so that's, that's essentially, um, all I wanted to say, really, just giving you a personal perspective of my, of my own journey related to sustainability. It's, it's kind of 
like I said, I feel a bit of a fraud because there's no data to analyze. I haven't done any reading on this particular presentation, but it's that, that's the point I want to get across. It's this idea that you can be personally interested in something and just through sheer doggedness, perseverance, I mean, the issues aren't going away. They're not going anywhere. Um, you can incorporate it in edit, um, whether that's directly, indirectly, whether that's through specific materials or just some conversations over a coffee. Um, and just by pure perseverance, you, you do, things happen, you, you can make things happen. So I've put here seven websites, which I can put in the chat afterwards, I have to do that. And essentially, thank you very much for listening. Um, when I first saw this call out for, for the Ballet Conference, I wasn't, oh, great, I can present. It was more that, oh, great, I want to hear about what other individuals and institutions are doing related to sustainability and EAP. Um, so please any comments any questions or use i would be really interested to hear your own stories of, uh, of things you're doing to, to to connect these two um very important um sectors or factors my email address is on the bottom there so feel free to an um, email but i want to uh, nice if i could hear any, hear any stories from you i'm gonna stop sharing my screen. thank you so much lucy are you Yes. Um, so does anyone have any question for Peter? Yes, April? Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. It's not a, a question per se, but I think it was really interesting what you were saying. And I think the idea of feeling like a fraud, I think <laughs> you didn't really, I think it's really important to share this, you know, what we're doing, what we're practicing and I think the fact that there's no sort of research behind, like you said, I think these personal experiences are really important. And I'm really, I thought it was really interesting. And I think bringing in your own um, interests and like you said, bridging that gap, mm. you know, your own passions into your practice and being able to also, um, you know, get some hours where it becomes part of your, uh, you know, connected with your line manager and, and that's accepted. I think that's really interesting. I think we need like to said, talk I think about that. Was, that. that was the Point. I mean, it's a, there is an imposter syndrome. I, I mean, like mm -hmm. deliver talks with data and data analysis and reference. This particular one about sustainability, it's just yeah. I, it's my own personal journey. And, and I think other people, well, I know that there are other teachers, not just EAP teachers, in similar positions. And it's not just, yeah. I think it goes back to what Simon said about when, you, and other people have said, when you address, when you bring up sustainability, it is more depressing. So it's a, it, there's a, very much a, a low note oh no look at the graphs yeah. um, it's all going downhill but there are so many little positives and things you can do um i found that many of my it's, it's changing a little bit but many of my students were coming to the uk and many of my pre-sessional students and they weren't even aware of the issues sort of pollution i student i'm yeah. generalizing here and it has changed but students from saudi arabia for example because recycling five six seven years ago the idea of separating your rubbish wasn't a isn't a thing so it was really rewarding to set an essay title about plastic pollution or scotland just imposing this single use coffee cup tax and they're going oh oh and then the next week you'd see them with key cups or i managed to get hold of some free key cups to give them and say look use these cups when in my classes and so and they would then go they went back to saudi arabia with a greater awareness of things happening yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, no, thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for not only sharing how you invent sustainability in your teaching, but also in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was really inspiring. Thank you so much. I'm just putting the schedule again in the chat so you can find your way to the next room. And again, big, big, big thank you to Peter. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you Thank so you much. See you in the next session.